Ivanova is always right. I will listen to Ivanova. I will not ignore Ivanova's recommendations. Ivanova is God. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dog. I'm Hujuana and today we'll be taking a look at one of the most important members of the crew of a ship, the Executive Officer. The EXO, First Officer, Number One. This is because I think that role in particular can provide some of the most fascinating characters in the genre. First, let's look at what the role entails. The EXO is the second in command aboard a ship, or really anywhere, but the focus for sci-fi is typically on ship crews. Their job is the actual day-to-day -day running of the ship, letting the command of the vessel focus on higher level issues, where the ship is going, what it's doing, that sort of thing. Broadly speaking, the first officer deals with the people on board, keeping them on task, overseeing promotions, monitoring morale, that sort of stuff. There's many ways of approaching this role. An EXO can be personable and friendly, while still being firm when necessary, like Ivanova from Babylon 5. She's generally cordial and very often shown doing the day-to-day -day running of the station from CNC, but will absolutely slam her authority down down on anyone being an idiot. She's also just generally an excellent character. Another cool Ivanova moment was when she insisted on leading the station Star Furies against the Earth Force fleet. She knew an officer had to be present for such an insane situation, rather than just sitting it out in a comfortable office. The opposite approach is to be a total hard-ass like Colonel Ty from Battlestar Galactica, who believes that if a crew doesn't hate their EXO, then he's not doing his job. But that might just be an alcoholic drinking some copium. Is affable or abrasive the better personality type for an EXO? Well, in fiction it comes down to it being fiction, and also depends on what the commanding officer is like. There's a particular and special dynamic that has to play out between the captain and their first officer. Not only are they both in command of the same ship and responsible for the lives of the crew aboard it, but if it's a warship, then they're also responsible for the lives that ship may end. Trust between the two is vital here, but also, from the narrative angle, their personalities have to gel together but also contrast each other. The different responsibilities and focuses of their command positions naturally roll into this, something that is particularly noticeable with Colonel Ty. Commander Adama is mostly level-headed, personable and takes to command with an ease born from long experience. In contrast, Ty is a mean-spirited alcoholic who can become overwhelmed when forced to take charge. But that doesn't mean he shies away from making the hard calls. The two work really well together, something that also stems from their long friendship. While we're talking about BSG, it also has a couple of fantastic examples of another quality that an effective EXO absolutely has to have. Autonomy. They need to have the confidence to give commands that would normally come from the captain, if time is a factor. In Razor, the EXO of Pegasus at the time, Major Kendra Shaw, makes a tactical decision that would normally be the remit of the captain, but he was busy with something else. That decisive action saved people's lives. Ty has his own moment in Season 4, when a damaged Cylon base star suddenly jumps into the midst of the colonial fleet. But he has a hunch, and yells out to belay an order to attack it, just before a friendly raptor also jumps in, revealing that it was escorting the rebel base star. Again, decisive action, but this time one that overrides the commanding officer's orders. The first officer must also be able to take command in the event that their captain is incapacitated or is otherwise not available. Ty is forced into this position by Adama being shot and muddles his way through with some questionable decisions. He's out of his depth, but it's fantastic for narrative. In contrast, Riker absolutely steps up in Best of Both Worlds, making some very hard calls even though he is actively battling against Picard. Just another example of Riker being good at his job, which generally speaking he was pretty great at. Often we see him dealing with the crew, like all throughout the episode Lower Decks, as well as during Tapestry. He and Troy are very gentle with alternate Picard's questions, but he's also candid in his delivery. It's important to note how diplomatic he is here. He never completely shuts down Alt-Picard's desire to work towards a command position he may not be suited for. 
But Riker isn't that good all the time. Once, he was actually very bad at this, which may stem from the nature of episodic television written by many people. I am of course talking about Reginald Barclay. Rather than doing his job and working to build Barclay's confidence and to get him on task, Riker throws professionalism out the window and instead spreads a mean nickname and entertains conspiracy theories over Barclay's competence. Thankfully, Picard puts a stop to that, but he shouldn't have to. At least Riker had the sense to bring up his misgivings in private, unlike Worf when he was temporary first officer while Data was in command of the ship. What a scene that followed that though, right? There's a similar scene in Crimson Tide, but here the reasoning for doing this is explored more deeply. The rest of the crew has to believe in a unified chain of command, that the CO and XO are working fully as a team and that there are no doubts in the orders being given by the captain. Such doubts and disagreements are to be voiced in private, where they cannot impact the thinking and morale of the crew. While talking about Crimson Tide, it's got another role that the executive officer is there to perform, and one that is of particular note in regards to weapons of mass destruction. The EXO acts as a check on the captain and is there to relieve them of command if they overstep their bounds, be they legal or procedural. The two of them must agree that the launch of incredibly destructive weapons is legal and is following authentic orders correctly. To a lesser extent, there is the moral choice of whether to fire at all, but the question over whether they even have moral authority in that situation is a whole other discussion. Going back to something I said earlier, and this movie is excellent for the dynamic between the two officers. The older Ramsey has the Cold War mindset, and believes they are there to win a war and to follow their orders as received. The younger Commander Hunter believes differently, in that they are there to prevent war from happening at all, and to some extent they're both correct. This generational gap is something that the final season of Discovery put its own twist on with Commander Rayner. He has much experience making tough calls during the time after the burn and the near collapse of the Federation. He gets paired up with Captain Burnham as her first officer, and she has a very different way of doing things that Rayner struggles to adapt to. He's a fantastic character, and it's fascinating watching him rework his style to fit the way things run aboard Discovery. Especially seeing him call out Burnham for that stupid Star Trek trope of bridge crew, and especially the captain, going off on away missions. Another Trek trope is the weird career advancement of many of the first officers of the shows. Riker has a whole plotline in Best of Both Worlds about his unwillingness to progress. Angelico also brings it up. Though we naturally know that this is because he is a main cast member and isn't going anywhere. It's certainly awkward in-universe though, isn't it? The opposite thing sort of happened to Saru in Discovery, since he moved to other duties off the ship between seasons, but the writers still found a way for him to be aboard ship for season 4. At least the last season did away with that and he was fully just not a crew member, and was barely on the ship at all. I find this difference interesting as it shows the vast changes the media landscape has undergone in the last 30 years, as well as the way the main cast are utilised. Along with the captain, the first officer is one half of what defines the character of a ship's crew, how they collectively act and engage with their jobs and each other. There's no one character archetype that best fits this role, because, well, it's fiction. Does the creator want a good XO or a bad XO? What's the story being told? How do they fit into it? No matter what the creator chooses, I feel that not being a captain often gives leeway for the executive officer to be one of the most interesting characters aboard a ship. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our frigate and space fighter design reference books. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters and thank you for watching.